Good evening, everyone. I call the special board meeting to order. All board members are present. Mrs. Kazmarek Bogner, would you please lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Please be advised in the event of a fire emergency and evacuation should be necessary, an alarm will sound. Please note all marked emergency exits and evacuate well away from the building. At this time, we request that everyone turn their cell phones and other electronic devices to silent. Thank you for your cooperation. May I please have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Mr. Borenstein, thank you. Mr. LeMay, second. All in favor? Opposed abstentions. Motion carries unanimously. Dr. McKenna, at this time I turn it over to you, sir, for recognition. Thank you very much, Ms. Leatherbear. We have many recognitions tonight. Um, first is for Dr. Daniel Wall. As you know, the Williamsville Central School District has an incredible administrative team. It is with great pleasure to share that Dr. Daniel Wall, principal at Transit Middle School, has been honored as the Secondary School Principal of the Year by the School Administrators Association of New York State. Dr. Wall is an inspiring leader who has led Transit Middle to being ranked as one of the best schools in New York State. He has continued to go above and beyond to serve his school community and ensure that students receive the extra support and services during these extraordinary times. He is an exemplary role model, an example to his students, staff, and our community. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. Let's take a look at a short video, video honoring Dr. Wall. Being the principal of transit has really been a blessing. Um, I really, awards like this don't just happen. I'm surrounded by amazing people other great leaders, um, the teachers, the staff, and I mean all the staff, from the custodians to the cooks, to the teacher's aide, to everyone who's making the copies, to the one-to-one -one aides, to the secretaries, um, everyone who really contributes uh, to, the whole, to, the, to the whole puzzle. The sixth grade team at Transit would like to congratulate you, Dad, on an amazing accomplishment. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dr. Wall, on being named Principal of the Year. Hi, Dr. Wall. Um, thank you for always being there in the hallways to say hi to all the kids. It really makes a big difference. Dan, you were one of the driving forces to get our special ed students back into the building four days a week when it was almost unheard of at the time. Our students are thriving because of the push you made. Uh, thank you for that. Congratulations on being the principal of the year. You deserve it. Dan has always been a key supporter of our music department. From making sure that our equipment is up to date, attending concerts, checking in with teachers, creating an open door policy, and above all, putting his trust in us. Thank you, Dan, for looking out for what is best for our students and supporting your teachers to achieve that goal. Congratulations on Principal of the Year. Leading a school like Transit, about 900 to 1,000 kids, depending on the year, um, a, a large staff, a lot of moving parts, but when you surround yourself with great people and you're, we all row in the same direction, uh, it's, you can really do great things. And at Transit, it's been more of like a family. Uh, so we rely on each other uh, and uh, we trust each other and it really allows us to do great things for kids. So it's, it's, it's only because of the great staff at Transit that awards like this are even possible. Congratulations, Dan! Well, congratulations to Dr. Wall. We're very proud of you, Dr. Wall.
Dan could not be with us here this evening as he's uh, recuperating from a, a leg injury. So all the best, Dan. Get well soon, and we look forward to having you back at Transit real fast. Also tonight, we are thrilled to share that Dodge teacher Betsy, Betsy Jengo and Mills Randy Siznicka have been honored by the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra and Erie County Music Educators Association for excellence in music education. Let's take a look at this award and their continued dedication to delivering music education to the students in our district. Teachers and members of the Buffalo Philharmonic get together and take nominations from all over the county on who are the outstanding educators in the area. The organization selects three teachers annually for the award. This year, it just so happens that two of them come from Lynn. So it shows a level of dedication, a level of commitment, and a level of just experience and excellence that, uh, that really, really stands above. Having outstanding educators is key to what we do. And Betsy and Randy are two great examples of outstanding educators. I'm filled with a huge amount of gratitude for this recognition. This past year and a half has certainly been a restart for me. And I have a quote that sums it all up. Your upbeat affects your downbeat. And those are music terms. But if we're upbeat, we're going to have a great downbeat and the kids are going to be successful and so am I. And I believe that music is more important than ever for the well-being of every one of us during this really trying time. I wasn't sure if I could do it this year, but these young musicians have inspired me to also be successful. And although there are days that are much harder than others, I keep reminding myself that the kids need to make music and be encouraged to be creative. Being here is just, um, it, it's just an incredible place to be, uh, not to work, but uh, just, just to be as a community member. I live in the community. My, my, my kids have gone to school uh, through Williamsville. We have everything we need here. We're, we're, we have the supportive administration. We have the support of the community. The parents are just doing a great job raising their kids. And the interest and the support for music uh, is just really second to none. If they show me that they enjoy orchestra, they love making music, I'll continue to support and nurture them all the way through as long as I have them as students. It's really helped me reach my potential and help me understand what I'm capable of. I've grown so much since being here, but I know I can grow more and I look forward to growing more and continuing to share my excitement for music with, with my students, not only now, but in the years to come. Right. Congratulations, Betsy and Randy, and a great job. Now we have some very special recognitions. Uh, we want to recognize two staff members who went above and beyond for our students and were truly heroes uh, in our district. First, we'd like to recognize Mill Middle School's Suzanne Ammerman. Mrs. Ammerman jumped into action and successfully performed the Heimlich maneuver on a student who was choking and saved the student's life. The Williamsville Central School District would like to thank and welcome Mrs. Ammerman to say a few words before we present her with a certificate of recognition for being a true hero. Mrs. Ammerman. Hi, thank you very much. Um, this is really, if anybody knows me, they know that I'm never shy or um, it's never hard for me to find the words, but this is really difficult for me because I just don't think that it was anything that deserves recognition like this. Um, I did what any one of my colleagues would have done in a situation as such. And um, I just, I'm, I'm really humbled by being recognized for this. Um, I didn't ever, I, this has been a fear of mine. I have to be honest with you since I started teaching and was in a cafeteria supervising lunches that a child would, um, would choke. Well, luckily for me, my sister choked in front of me not that long ago. And I witnessed my husband performing the Heimlich maneuver. And I just kind of emulated what I saw that day. And luckily for me, it worked out. And I have to say, um, it's been a really, really difficult year, a really challenging year for all of us. And I really appreciate the fact that I was able to have an experience that provided me with a feeling of 
such satisfaction um, in that I was able to really help a child in need because, you know, it, it really was a difficult, scary situation. So um, I'm glad that it worked out the way that it did. DJ Blackwood and I are like this for life now. <laughs> And um, I thank you very much for recognizing me. No, say, thank you. You're a true hero, and we really appreciate it. I don't know it, about so, that, yeah. but thank you. Well, Ms. Eleven Johnson, and on behalf of all of us here at the Mansville Central School District, we'd like to give you this. Thank you. And say thank you for being a, a true hero in our community. Oh, my God. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm smiling under the hat. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we've got more heroes. It's amazing. <laughs> Next, we'd like to recognize Williamsville North teacher aide Dawn Talty. After getting stuck on the elevator with a student, Mrs. Talty remained calm, cool, and collected for more than 45 minutes, helping keep the situation under control while emergency personnel worked to open the elevator and get everyone out safely. Her actions kept the student calm under very serious conditions, and for her actions under great stressful conditions. She is a true hero. The Williamsville Central School District would like to thank and welcome Mrs. Talty to say a few words before we present her with a certificate of recognition for being a hero. Mrs. Talty. Oh my gosh. Um, thank you, Dr. McKenna, board members. Um, this is wonderful and so unexpected and I'm, I'm honored to receive this award. Um, I have received such an outpouring of kindness and care and concern from everyone at Williamsville North, from my principals, um, from my amazing life skills department. I am truly fortunate to work um, in such a wonderful school. And um, again, I thank you and I truly appreciate this. Well, we appreciate everything that you've done too. You're a true hero. Come thank on. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that concludes our recognitions for this evening. Great. Thank you very much. Are there any board acknowledgments at this time? Mrs. Van Seis. Actually, I would like to recognize um, just an extension of gratitude. Number one, for all of the work, Dr. McKenna, district leadership, every staff member, parents, students, for bringing back our students K to four in person for the opportunity to now attend full time for those that chose to. Um, I do not have a child at that grade level, but we have seen an outpouring of gratitude from parents and how excited the students are. So I would just like to personally extend a thank you for all of the immense work going into that. And secondly, I would like to really also extend appreciation for the amount of work that Christine Harding, our nurse practitioner, also did with many other people in order to provide vaccinations right here within our own school district. So my daughter, who no longer attends the district, who is now in college, was able to get vaccinated because she's a family member. It was outstanding. The smoothest process going, checking in. We were in and out. It was so well run. So I'd also like to do a shout out to Rite Aid, but for providing this opportunity within our own district was outstanding. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Van Sice. Mr. Bornstein. 
Thank you. Um, last Friday, uh, Dr. McKenna hosted a VIP tour of our new music facilities uh, at North and at East. South is still under construction, so we couldn't get in there. But I wanted to thank you, Dr. McKenna, for hosting. But also a shout out to Mike Russo, who prepared students and music uh, teachers in a way that showed off our music education program to the VIPs present in a wonderful way. Uh, and some of the people who attended were our state legislator, Karen McCann, McMahon, Ed Rath, our state senator, uh, representatives from the Buffalo Philharmonic, representatives from the Amherst Symphony. And so um, I was really very proud to be a part of that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bornstein. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. We're moving on to our consent agenda, but I have been asked by a board member to separate items five and six. So I'm gonna start with item five, which is personnel. May I have a motion please to approve item five personnel as presented. Mrs. Deager, thank you. Mr. Mecca, second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 801. Thank you. May I have a motion, please, to approve item six special needs and student activities as presented? Thank you, Mrs. Van Sice. Mr. LeMay, second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Moving on to item seven, is there a motion please to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting held on April 13th, 2021? Thank you, Dr. McClary. Mr. LeMay is a second. Are there any corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, all approval on those minutes. Opposed, abstentions, motion carried unanimously, thank you. And may I also have a motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting, which was the BOCES administrative budget and board member election meeting held April 20th, 2021. This was our very short meeting, not too long ago. Mrs. Deager, thank you. Mrs. Kasmer ack bogner is a second. Are there any corrections or additions to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you, motion carries 801. All right, moving on to our president's report. There is information on our district website and on board docs pertaining to the 2021 annual budget vote and school board election. At this time, Mrs. Carey, do you wish to speak on this issue? Go look for you. You're in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Carey. Thank you, Mrs. Thotherbarrow. Just a few um, bullet points. Uh, the annual district votes May 18th from 7 till 9 p.m. It's in person. Uh, our district staff will be adhering to Erie County uh, Department of Health protocols and New York State guidance at the time of the vote. There are two propositions on the ballot, the proposed budget and the school board member election. Uh, for candidate information, it is on our website. There will also be a candidates night and that is on May 12th um, and that will be live streamed. So all that information is in board docs and also on our website. Um, and then the last item is the absentee ballot. Um, so right now I'm at the point where I have packets ready to go with the application to be sent to anyone who requests it. Um, so this is what it's going to look like. There's the application, and you'll have two envelopes. Oops, sorry. Place in the ballot will go in this envelope. Sign. You have to make sure you sign the back of that. Then the application will go in the ballot envelope here, along with your signed enclosed ballot in that. That's how it should come back to me. We are picking up the postage on this. However, there's two other options, lockbox out in front of district office, and then at district office, you can drop it off at reception within um, business hours. Any questions? Nope. Thank you for okay. all your work on that, Mrs. Carey. And I did see the drop box with a very 
clearly labeled signs yeah. as I entered. So thank you very much okay. for all your work on this. And everyone come out to vote. Absolutely, everyone come out to vote on May 18th. Moving on to our board evaluation and um, monitoring of our board goals. So at our August board meeting, we approved our goals. And then in September, we approved activities for those goals. And at our January meeting, we did a mid-year review of those goals. So um, earlier this week, I did send an email to board members just letting us everyone know um, that we do need to review these. Um, so what I'm going to ask is if the progress on these goals can please be updated by May 20th so it can be included in board docs in time for our board meeting on May 25th. And the same person that was assigned to each goal, if you would, if you would please um, continue with that work for this year, and then we can reassign them again next year. Please submit your updates to Mrs. Perry so she can include them in the PowerPoint that I had um, sent to you in the email. And if you miss my email, you can always pull up that PowerPoint from Board Docs from our January meeting. The self-evaluation is step one in the super eval process. We do the evaluation at the end of the year and the results are used to drive our action steps for the 2021-2022 school year, which will begin on July 1st. So um, the window for all nine of us to complete the self-evaluation will run from Saturday, May 22nd to Saturday, June 5th. And I know that's a tight turnaround, but our board meeting is on the 8th and we need to be able to present our board evaluation to the public on June 8th to close out our year. Okay, does anyone from the board have any questions on that? And I will, well, you'll be able to look at the video, but I'll also reiterate all this in an email to everybody. I do have a question. Yeah, go ahead. I know that we, some of us had board goals um, and I know some of you are really organized and have much better memories. Mm -hmm. How would we remember oh, which one what board goal? Because <laughs> I know I did one. I can sign to student achievement. Thank you very much. Um, but I'll I'll double I'll double check it. Mm -hmm. But I, I wrote myself notes. Um, Excellent. Left those notes on my desk at home. You actually put uh, initials next, next to, to it on the email. But in the That's email. Good. I should see. I should have waited. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Right. Question. Yeah, because I remembered I had the same question. This yeah. is I, I was I couldn't remember what any of us were assigned to. Um, this year is a blur. So I went back and I pulled up the video and I watched the video and that's how I figured it out. Okay. Um, so thank you for that question. All right, moving on to item C. May I have a motion to approve the amended 2020 2021 school calendar as presented. Thank you, Mrs. Eager. Mr. Maka second. Is there any discussion on this? I just want to bring up a point of discussion because I know there was some confusion. Um, Dr. McKenna, from what from looking at what I from the calendar, we're not adding days to the school year. No. Right? It's the, it's the same number of days. We've removed a day for our staff. Yes. So the staff no longer will need to come in on the Monday. Yep. We'll be able to end on that Friday. So there's no additional days being added to the calendar. Our, our calendar is as presented online. That is correct. All right, great. Any other questions or comments on that? All right, seeing none, all in favor to approve the amended calendar? Thank you, opposed, abstentions, motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to move on to our superintendent's report. Dr. McKenna, would you like to give our community update? Yes, we have a brief community update today, and it really is focused on the calendar because we want to make sure we get some uh, clarity and information out to everyone. And we'll get some information out uh, tonight, but of course, we'll be sending information out with our building principals as well. So uh, as you know, we just did some amendments to the uh, end of year calendar, and we sent out some schedules changes already to uh, our parents uh, in WITS. But here's a, a brief summary. We sent a WITS mail to families on Monday, May 3rd, regarding the changes to the end of the year calendar. There is no school now on Friday, June 18th, as the district observes the Juneteenth holiday. The last day uh, a student for, for instruction 
is on Thursday, June 24th. The last teacher day is Friday, June 25th. Now, elementary school, there's three half days that they have in June per contract. And this year, there will be on Friday, June 11th, Thursday, June 17th, and Thursday, June 24th. And again, we'll be sending, all the principals will also be sending out information in their newsletters regarding all of this as well. Mr. Or Dr. McKinney, I stop you for one moment. The sure. half days, are you, is that saying that that only applies for elementary? That's only elementary, okay. yep. Thank you for that clarification. Yep, and they will send out the, the clarification, the elementary schools, as will the uh, middle school and high school will also send out clarifications in their, in their newsletters with all of this information. The end of the year for the middle school and, and high schools, the week of June 14th, so we did some just changes with the, the last two weeks to make sure that we maximize uh, instructional time. Group A students will attend class on Monday, June 14th and Tuesday, June 15th, while Group B students will attend class virtually and follow their daily bell schedule. Group B students will attend class on Wednesday, June 16th and Thursday, June 17th, while Group A students will attend class virtually and follow their daily bell schedule. And you can see we put a, a visual there too, so everyone you know could clearly see it. And this we put this on WITS, and again, the building principals will also be sending this out in their newsletters as well. And they'll be going over this um, probably multiple times between the end of the year just to make sure that everybody gets this, um, say many times to make sure it, it's very clear. And then the next week, June 21st, is the exact same schedule uh, for middle school and high school as you can see. So I, I won't read through all that again, but you can see that it is the same schedule. And this again has been posted on WITS and all of our building principals will be sending this information out uh, again and multiple times before the end of the year in their newsletters, just to make sure that it's as clear as possible. So that's a, a summary of some of the changes uh, at, for the end of the year. Before, just, before you go on to the middle and high school plan to pivot, um, that's group A and B. So our cohort, I believe, is it C, the group that comes in four days a week? They would come in every day. They would come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then, yep. Right? Okay. Yep, and that's then what we would do. What about our fully remote students? I want to make sure we're being inclusive about them too. How remote would students would just stay remote, and they would stay remote, but they would still, with our high flex model, they're still remote right now anyways, so they would just stay at home and they'd get the same instruction, only they'd stay remote. But there's no change in the remote instruction at all. So they would log on Monday through Thursday? Yep. But not on Fridays? Because right. Okay, got it. No school on, on Fridays. And we'll make sure too, when we get the information out, we spoke to the principals about that as well, and they'll put clarifications in their newsletters uh, to make sure that everybody knows and understands that as well. No, it's got any other questions about the any of the changes? No, I just know I wanted to ask the, those questions because I do know that that was a little confusing to a few parents. No, it's good. Yeah, no change for, for the remote students. They will remain remote. Okay, thank you. And just a quick uh, update on the plan to pivot. As I know that you mentioned already, uh, Ms. Van Seist, that we got the elementary schools in. And I want to thank everybody, um, all our, our staff, all our faculty, of uh, everyone that made that happen. Of course, our parents and students who were so cooperative through the process as well. It's great to see kids in. Everybody's excited that our elementary students, K-4, are, are back in the building. And we really hope that we can get our middle school and high school kids in as soon as possible as well. But this is the, a graphic that we've showed before. Based on the current data and information from Erie County, we are still in a high-risk transmission zone. Yeah. Now, the last data that we've got, you can see the trend is going down and it's heading in a good direction. Mm -hmm. But uh, last week, we we're still at 183.8 uh, per 100,000. Uh, we heard today it's even gone down less than that, which is good. So it's trending in a good uh, in a good way. However, it still needs to get to under 100 per 100,000 for us to be able to bring the middle school and high school students back to school. So although we're trending in the right direction, we're not there yet, but as soon as we hit those numbers, um, our faculty and staff have prepared, they are ready to go, and we, can, we will be able to pivot quickly for our middle school and high school students as well. But I just wanted to bring you up to speed on, on where we are with the current data um, with uh, the, the high risk transmission rate in, in the area at this time. So um, that's where we are with that. Thank you very much. Does anyone from the board have any questions or comments? Mrs. Geiger? Yeah. 
Uh, I'm just thank you so much for all those visuals, by the way. Awesome. You're helpful. <laughs> I'm a visual person, so I really do appreciate that. Uh, I'm curious about the plan to pivot for middle and high school. As you mentioned, those numbers are trending, and I've been you know, getting on the Erie County Department of Health and looking and seeing that go down. If uh, we do get to a point where we are no longer um, in the high risk, uh, where, where we can bring our students back, what will that turnaround look like? Um, what will the messaging look like? Is it something that, you know, we go under 100 per 100,000 cases and it's the next day? Will, will families be able to expect messaging from uh, administration if that does come into play? I'm just sure. curious what, what that turnaround will look like if, in fact, we do reach the point where it's deemed safe for children who aren't cohorts to come back to school? It'd be very similar to what we just saw with the elementary school. We have correspondences actually you know, ready to go for that as well. Right. And they're basically to be almost the same correspondences that we use with the elementary school, but we would have uh, the ability for middle school and high school would now be pivoting. Uh, now, the first transition took approximately two weeks with the, with the elementary school. But because we've done pre-planning, we figure now that this would take us probably about a week to get the busing set and to get everything ready to go. So we've got a lot of things staged, everything ready. So uh, if that goes down, we could make that turnaround, we believe, within a week. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think that's a great point, too, because I think it's important that parents understand that, that yes, we're, we've done a, you've done a tremendous amount of planning, but we can't just flip on a dime like that because we do have to account for ordering you know, our, our breakfasts and lunch and making sure we have adequate transportation and that will take a few days. So approximately a week is what you're estimating if there's a, if we get below that 100,000. Right. And, and, 100 level. and you're absolutely right. Transportation and cafeteria are the two areas that we have to focus on for that. And uh, luckily we did a lot of the work already with all the furniture, the desks, the chairs, the tables. We've got that all ready to roll. So uh, and in fact, we've even got a lot of um, the classrooms already ready. They've already put the desks in the classroom. So um, physically, the buildings are ready. It really is comes down to transportation and the cafeteria preparation. Um, and we figure that's about a week. Okay. And just one comment with the calendar. Um, I would just like to say with the calendar, to draw attention that I think it's an awesome idea that we took the kids um, that are in the cohort on Thursday, Friday. And because we don't have school for two Fridays in a row, we moved it to Wednesday, Thursday. I realized sitting here, I'm the only one affected as a board member with my child that would have missed those in-person days. So to know that he'll be able to have school Wednesday, Thursday now for the last two weeks, it just shows the equity that we're making sure that our students have. So I appreciate the initiation of that. Thank you. And we wanted to maximize instructional time and have equity between the two cohorts as well. So thank you very much, Ms. Van Sack. Two questions, uh, brief ones. One, uh, are we, with the adjustments to the calendar, we're still hitting the 180-day minimum requirement, correct? Yes. Thank you. The second question is, is, is there a point when pivoting does not make sense? And what is that point? Well, we've, we've had some conversations about that, and we don't have a, a definitive date. And we would just have to make that determination, you know, when it comes. We we want to do everything we can to get kids into school. So we'll just have to make that determination when the time comes. And uh, um, But we don't have a definitive date yet. Okay. And, and I'm assuming the last week of school, we're not going to pivot. So I, I, that's why I asked. So. You never know, though, because, you know, even though it might not affect the academic aspect, mm -hmm. For the like, if the children had the opportunity to see their entire class one, even one. The last mm -hmm. week of school, uh, speaking as a mom of a senior, I know that that would be a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, because he hasn't seen his entire class that he's graduating with, and then after the end of this month or the end of June, he, he may not ever see them again. And um, I, I just want to, you know, encourage our district leadership, please, if we do get to a position where those numbers go down, even if it's the last week, if we can do it, I think we should do it for the social emotional aspect alone. I know I've had multiple conversations with the students as well. And I know that uh, the students have, uh, especially the seniors, they want very much to have some time in school. So we'll do everything we can to, um, if possible, to make things happen for those kids. 
Thank you. And, and, and to echo that, there's some wonderful activities being planned at all three high schools to honor our seniors um, from watching Ferris Bueller's Day Off at the Transit Drive-In. Um, we had Buffalo Battlegrounds. We've got just some really exciting things happening and more to come that was shared recently at PTA meeting. So thank you to all of the work to, in our building levels because I know a lot of work goes into all of that. Thank you. Great, thank you, Dr. McKenna. We are moving on to our special item of the night, which is number 10A, personnel. This is regarding our superintendent search and we have a, a wonderful update to share with everyone tonight. At this time, I'm going to call on Mrs. Van Sice, our board's vice president, to read a resolution. We will need a second for that resolution. And then I will ask Mrs. Carey to take a roll call vote. Whereas the Board of Education of the Williamsville Central School District initiated a search for its superintendent of schools in January 2021, led by the Erie One BOCES District Superintendent, Dr. Lynn Fusco. And whereas the Board of Education and eight constituent committees, totaling approximately 100 people, vetted and interviewed a number of applicants. And whereas the Board of Education has since ended its search and determined that Darren J. Brown Hall, EDD, is the selected candidate. And whereas the Board of Education is pleased to have offered Dr. Brown Hall the position of superintendent for the Williamsville Central School District. And whereas in accordance with New York State Education Law Section 1711, a written contract of employment sets forth the terms and conditions of employment between the Board of Education and Dr. Brown Hall, which all board members have reviewed and received a copy. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the president of this Board of Education is hereby authorized and directed to execute the agreement for a contract of employment on behalf of the Board of Education to employ Dr. Darren Brown Hall as the district's superintendent of schools beginning on July 1st, 2021. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Van Sice, for that motion. May I have a second on this resolution? Mr. LeMay, thank you. Mrs. Carey, at this time, would you please take a roll call vote? Yes. Mr. Bornstein? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Speaker? Yes. Mr. Biscalia? Yes. Mrs. Van Sice? Yes. Mrs. Latterbarrow? Yes. And Dr. McClary? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mrs. Kesnerjack Bolger? Yes. And Mr. Mecca? Yes. Thank you. We are pleased to announce that as a result of an open search process, under the leadership of District Superintendent, Dr. Lynn Fusco. The Williamsville Board of Education has selected Dr. Darren Brown Hall as our next superintendent of schools. Dr. Brown's, Dr. Brown Hall's experience and achievements in the Buffalo Public Schools have prepared him to adeptly and effectively lead the Williamsville Central School District into the future. Community involvement and support was a critical component to the open search process. As a board, we wish to thank all of the students, staff, parents, community leaders, all who participated in this process, both those who completed our district, district survey and those who gave of their time to serve on an advisory interview committee. After careful consideration of all feedback and several rounds of interviews by the board, we, the Board of Education, have made the decision that Dr. Brown Hall is the right leader at the right time. Together, we will cohesively lead the district, sharing a collective vision of supporting all learners to reach their full potential. We also especially want to thank Dr. McKenna for his unwavering and committed service to the district and its students. Dr. McKenna is a man of great integrity who filled an immediate and essential need and stepped in to steer the ship and calm the waters 
during a seriously challenging time. We are grateful to you, Dr. McKenna, and our district leadership team for getting our district back on track and for getting our schools operating effectively under the health and safety provisions of the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. McKenna, we thank you and we are fortunate that you are part of the Williamsville team. I would now like to invite Dr. Brown Hall to the podium to say a few words. And then he and I will also be available at the conclusion of the meeting for a press conference via Zoom. Dr. Brown Hall. We gotta give him a round of applause. Oh, yeah. oh, well, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. So, ah, no matter what the Buffalo News says, that made it official. So I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, board members, just for your confidence um, in selecting me to be the next superintendent and the community members for their work in the process also. I am truly honored to be selected as the next superintendent of the Williamsville Schools. Um, I, I pledge to you that I am going to be able to work with all of the constituents to build on the greatness that is already here in Williamsville. I watch board meetings. I've listened to parents' concerns when they're the speakers at the board meetings. I've actually looked at every school's website and read the newsletters. So I know what greatness is here in Williamsville. And I also wanna be able to identify opportunities for improvement so that we can together collaboratively ensure that all students in the district are successful. Because the only way that we're gonna be successful and even experience greater success is when every student experiences success in our school district. So I also want to acknowledge the fact that as a board, as a community, as the search consultant, Lynn Fusco, I am very appreciative that you all ensured that there were no artificial barriers in place that would prohibit a qualified person of color to advance through the rigorous search process you had in place. So that speaks volumes. And I wanna say I'm greatly appreciative of that also. I know that together we will move beyond this pandemic and we will make sure that our students are back in a nurturing learning environment that is intentionally inviting for all students as we look forward to the 21-22 school year. So again, being the son of a pastor, I can go on for days, but I'm not. So I want to, again, thank you very much for having the confidence in me to be your next superintendent. I also wanna thank Dr. McKenna for everything he's done for the district up until this point and going into the future. I look forward to working with him, with Mr. Matursky, Dr. Balin, Mr. Skangzuzo as a leadership team. I look forward to looking to working with them and building again on the greatness that's already here and with all of you board members too. So again, thank you very much for this opportunity and July 1, we'll get started, but as you know, Prior to July 1, there's a lot of work I'll be doing with the leadership team. So thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. and I just want to um, be transparent and say that after the at the conclusion of the meeting, I will sign the contract. And then um, once it's signed, we will have our district clerk uploaded into board docs so it will be available. Um, as part of our record in our board doc system, which is accessible from our district website. Also at the conclusion of our meeting, we're not done yet, but at the conclusion of our meeting, um, Mr. Filipowski will be setting up um, a press conference with a Zoom link. And so he's going to, yeah, he did, dash out to um, send out those notices probably right now as I'm speaking. All right, so thank you very much. We are going to continue with our agenda, which is now item 11. And Dr. McKenna, I turn it over to you and Mr. Matursky for our budget presentation and our review of the 2021-2022 budget. Well, I'll turn it immediately right over to Mr. Matursky, who is uh, ready with his presentation. Thank you, Dr. McKenna. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, today, we're doing the budget presentation that is required uh, prior to the budget vote on uh, May 18th. Uh, the information you're seeing is a summary tonight. Um, I do want to make mention that detailed budgets are available in all of our schools, in the district office, as well as in all three Amherst libraries. 
So what uh, I wanted to do to start is just to give a brief overview on uh, what we're going to review tonight. Um, we'll review the uh, impact to the educational programs. We're gonna go over the major revenue items, including New York State aid, uh, multi-year planning for the federal revenue, and uh, an analysis that shows how we calculated the New York State aid and how it compares to the uh, state budget reports that we receive. Uh, from that, we're gonna go into the program continuation or the expense increases, tax rate information, and then the uh, budget and uh, tax report cards, which are again required by New York State to be uh, submitted to them as well as to our community. So uh, to start with, uh, as far as the, uh, the program implications, uh, we know that this was a very difficult budget development process. Uh, we had um, a lot of bumps in the road but where we wound up is in a very solid position. And most importantly, uh, our educational programs have all been maintained. And just as importantly is the maintenance of those non-mandated programs, the items such as music and athletics and all the supports that we have for our students, the AIS programs, all of those items are in this budget and uh, our staffing levels are also maintained to support those items. So we had no budget reductions and uh, most importantly, not only are we preparing this budget for next year, but we also are preparing for the future. And I'll talk more about that as I continue the presentation. So just showing you uh, the revenue side, which was really our critical area, this entire budget process, um, the total New York State aid that we are receiving is almost $44.7 million. Uh, I'm going to be going through a little more detail on how those numbers were calculated shortly. Uh, and then the federal revenue that we are adding to this coming budget is a little over $3 million for a total revenue budget of $47,696,161. Uh, the bottom part of this is how we're looking to distribute the federal funds to multi-years. And again, you see what we're proposing for the file, the next year, the 21-22, but you're seeing that we're able to, to move some of those dollars to the future, to actually two future years. And that's gonna help us as we transition to, um, to reduce the federal revenues, but maintain programs again. So uh, the allocation of federal funds is available to school districts based on the laws that are governing them. So uh, the CRRSA, or now they're also referring it to as ESSER II, uh, may be used in 21-22 and 22-23 as of now. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna say that quite a bit because mm -hmm. the laws may adjust. So we need to be aware of the adjustments as they move forward. The America Rescue Plan uh, is also now being abbreviated as ARP. And again, our multi-year use of those funds is looking at 23-24. Uh, but it might be going out again to a further year of 24-25. Um, one of the reasons why it makes it so important that we can plan ahead in a multi-year process is because our normal contractual increases on salary and benefits is usually about $5 million. So we need to be aware that that's re really where we start our budget process. So having these dollars already there will provide that stability that we need. And again, we do not know what is actually gonna happen with the economy. It, it's, it's been discussed that the economy will recover quickly. And if that happens, we'll be in a better shape. So uh, again, uh, we're able to maintain our staffing levels. And uh, the one note I do wanna say is that there are stipulations that go with federal funds. And uh, there are gonna be reports. There are gonna be items that you have to use percentages on it. Uh, I know that some of the um, ESSR, ER2s require um, money to be set aside for learning loss and items like that, but we haven't received all the details and we expect to receive them in the month of May. Uh, so again, that's gonna be forthcoming, but it will not have a significant impact on our budget plan as it is in this current budget and mo most likely not in the future budgets. The one important item I just wanna stress at the bottom is this is in the federal language and it says other activities that are necessary to maintain the operation and continuity of services in local educational agencies, that's us, uh, and continuing to employ existing staff 
of the local educational agency. So therefore, that provides us the ability to use these funds to support our program and support our staffing. So uh, I wanted to transition now to kind of reviewing how we got to the New York State aid numbers. And uh, sometimes it's printed in papers that we get a certain dollar amount uh, and then there's a certain percentage increase. Uh, so I wanted to show and, and describe why our amounts are a little bit lower than what were in the paper. So first of all, um, the universal pre-K program revenue is always included in New York State monies. Uh, that's a federally funded program, but most importantly, it must be um, accounted for in the special aid fund. So that cannot be included in our general fund revenue. So we have to move that aside. And then there's other items such as New York State Building Aid. You all know we have our music project going on. So we send in our forms at the right time after we sign our contracts. When SED receives those forms, they automatically put it into their queue and they start to calculate aid on it. But we don't receive the aid on those projects until we file the final cost reports, which won't be until probably next April. So therefore, None of those items will be aided in, in the upcoming budget. It will be aided in the year after. So we have to make sure that those aids are properly um, uh, budgeted and not overestimated. So, and then the same situation occurs for many of the other expenses from BOCES expense to transportation. They're looking at our budget. And as we know with COVID, we did not have all the expenses this year and the budget that we have as far as revenue goes for next year is established based on this year's final expenses. And those expenses are submitted in September and we get our first real state aid reports in December. So the reality is they're all estimates. So we have to make sure we're not overestimating revenue because if we do so, we will have a deficit to start the next year when we develop our budget. So uh, a look at the uh, program continuation expenses now. This is something the board has seen now over the last couple of months. There's been no changes. Uh, the majority of these uh, expense increases are again in salary and benefits. And the total increase is $5,821,237. The total budget is $205,020,967 or 2.92%. So again, required by uh, certainly New York state law, we have a balanced budget, revenues equal the expenditures, and the major increases here are in foundation aid, a little bit over 4 million and 16.29%. That's a key number because if you're over 10%, it requires us to have a foundation aid plan. And that will be something that we will have to put together before July 1 and have it uh, uh, put it out to our community and also um, put it on uh, our website. And as you've heard me say already, we still haven't have, we do not have all the guidance on that yet, but it should be coming, forthcoming. So, um, I think we went over a couple of slides, so I'm just gonna go back here. The state aid analysis, uh, I wanted to show you the, how these items uh, were reduced we started with uh, $50,675,990. You can see the reductions here for UPK, building aid, and the other expenses. That equals the amount that we actually have in the budget, $44,659,999. The federal aid is added, and we have the a revenue budget of $47,696,161. Uh, here we have the uh, increase comparison so you can see that from a uh, gross perspective, you have a 25.93% increase. But if you look at it from the adjusted perspective based upon the required adjustments we had to make, it's a 10.98% increase, which is still very substantial and appreciated, uh, but it is not the 25.93%. Uh, again, I just reviewed the fact how general fund expenses play into uh, the development of the actual revenue estimates. We saw that, we saw that one. So I'm just gonna go to the tax bill estimates at this point. Uh, again, uh, these are based on last year's assessed values as well as equalization rates. 
So for a home assessed at $150,000, the basic uh, STAR uh, subsidy, it would be a $55.21 increase and enhance would be $39.19. Uh, I have, will say that historically over the last few years, assessed values have gone up. So the rates normally do go down when we receive those assessed values at the, toward the end of July, and then we set the tax rate in August. The next two items I know on the screen, they're very hard to read, uh, but I wanted to put it here. These are required items that we have to file with New York State as well as our community. Uh, the first is the budget notice. And the key items here are really to show the budget increase, uh, show what it would be under a contingent budget. And the difference basically is the tax levy. $3,375,000 is removed from the budget. And therefore you have the lower percent increase of 1.23%. The middle section of this is showing you basically the tax cap calculation. And the key numbers are at the very bottom in line um, I, which is basically showing that we are under the tax cap by $7,572 this year. But again, that's important because we're under the tax cap and it also preserves the STAR uh, re um, rebates and uh, exemptions for our community. And then uh, as required in this document, we have to show the three uh, component pieces of our budget, administrative, program, and capital. And you can see that they are relatively the same as they were in past years. And therefore, uh, even looking at the uh, contingent budget, it's a similar percent. The next item is your property tax report card. Uh, some of the same information, but the, really the difference here is they add enrollment in at the beginning. So they're talking about tax cap at the, at the, at the first, first part of it. Uh, but then they talk about our reserves. And I wanted to share what the forecast is on that. You can see the adjusted restricted balance is down about $10 million. And that's due to the fact that our music capital project will be using about $10 million of reserves as approved by our community back in 2018 that will be transferred and those dollar amounts will then deplete the reserve by that amount. The other thing you're seeing as a, an adjustment is the assigned appropriated fund balance. That's down by a 3 million or so. The reason for that is that we had higher encumbrances that were carried over from last year to this year. You may remember we spoke about that at a previous board meeting. Um, those will not be happening this year. So we'll have a, more of a normal type um, uh, carryover encumbrances. And that's the reason for those reductions. Uh, we are at 4%, which is the legal limit for unrestricted fund balance. So we're going to be at that limit. And then the other reserves are all listed here as estimates. Uh, the point I'll show is again, capital reserve is the one that is down. So that one is, uh, is where you're seeing that major decrease. Uh, these also include what I would expect at this time to be some funding additions or refunding. And so uh, that's also included in these numbers. So with that, um, that's going to end the number part of the presentation. Uh, on our to-do list is the uh, candidates night, May 12th, as well as the budget vote, uh, which is on May 18th and school board election. Thank you very much, Mr. Matursky, for this detailed presentation and all of the work you and your department have done Thank you. on our budget. I know it's been quite a, a wave we've been riding this year. Does anyone from our board have any questions or comments for the budget? Mr. Biscalia. Um, you know, I, I think it's important for the community to understand with a, with a budget. Um, I, I learned this young because I had family in education, unfortunately, sometimes. Um, but it's important to know when you are voting, and, and I know it's a difficult year for every community in America, um, that when you hear contingency budget and you look at numbers and you see, oh, it might not be as big as an increase or tax-wise, you have to understand in a contingency budget, things that are cut are, are non-mandatory things such as electives, AP courses, athletics, music, um, and I, I just, I hope the public knows that and the community knows that when they're voting, um, especially next year, uh, hopefully getting back to normal and in school full. Those are the type of things that really help the social emotional growth of students 
Um, so just keep that in mind as people vote. Um, you know, you look at budgets and you say, oh, contingency budget, it might be better. It's not as much as our taxes, but, you know, as we have to think of different things as we go forward and, and just so everyone understands when they're voting a contingency budget does not it cuts the non-mandatory things that are you know almost i think essential for next year um for our students so um just a thought so, thank you well said mr Vestalia. thank you any other questions or comments thank you very much mr Matursky. we will now hold a public hearing on the proposed budget um, Mrs. Carey, has anyone registered tonight for the public hearing? Okay, she's saying that no one has registered just for the record. Registration was um, noticed on our district website, and I saw that Mr. Filipowski sent it out several times through different um, social media outlets. So is there anyone here in person that would like to speak regarding the budget? I say that to the sea of empty chairs. <laughs> All right. Well, that takes care of that. So I, I will say that our budget hearing is now closed and for the record, no one chose to speak on it this time around. So um, let's see here. Uh, as Mr. Matursky has, has previously said, we will be having our Meet the Candidates Night, which is May 12th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. That will be live streamed on our district YouTube channel. And as Mr. Biscalia very well said, please come out and support our budget and vote for your choice for school board members on uh, Tuesday, May 18th, which is the day of our district vote happening at North High School Gymnasium from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And directions were given if you would like to receive an absentee ballot. And it also, finally for this month, we will have our May regular board meeting on May 25th. So May 25th will be our, our regular board meeting for the month of May. All right, so would someone like to make a motion to adjourn the special board meeting? Mr. Mr. LeMay, thank you. Ms. Uh, Ms. Beeger, second. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor of adjournment? Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion carries unanimously. We are adjourned. Good night, everyone. <laughs>